Welcome back, Edgeteers. We're going to talk about Apple and the walled garden. Is it closing in on you? Well, to be honest, I'm going to say no. Um, there is going to be some new annoyance when you install applications that are open source and have not been signed, meaning uh, Apple has not agreed that your product is what they want. You have to become a part of the programming group. I'm not sure what it's called. And um, you pay, I think it's $99 a year to do that. And they will vet your program for you so that it can be used here. If you already have a program installed that's open source, don't panic. I believe there won't be any problem and your program should continue to run based on what I've been reading. I know I can't guarantee that, but it seems to me that won't be an issue. If it doesn't, there are ways to fix it. We're gonna talk about that. Okay, so looking here, you can see I've got quite a few open source programs. So I don't really use uh, Mac applications except for the basic ones that I need to use. I definitely prefer open source because when I go to my Linux computer, I'm using the same applications and they're open source. I was on my workstation yesterday. Say I make a document in LibreOffice here on my Mac. It's easy to open on any of my Linux systems. And to be honest, I'm just familiar with all these apps. These are the ones I like. I don't consider Brave open source, by the way. So don't be scared. The walled garden is not closing in on you. But like I said, there are more annoyances and we're gonna talk about that. One of the things that bother me about this issue is a lot of writers and YouTubers are putting up videos um, saying that no unsigned apps are gonna be allowed anymore. And there isn't an option to actually run the application with control click. I think you probably are familiar with that where you can download an application and when you want to install it, you hold down the control and double click the app to start it. And it would bypass Gatekeeper, which is the program that Apple installed that basically stops you uh, from just installing software. I guess the point is they want you to think about it before you install it. There are a lot of programs that you can download that are unsigned. It's a little bit scary, okay, because if you download an unsigned application, there's always the possibility that it could be spyware, uh, it could be a virus, probably not, or it could be a backdoor program that wants to take control of your computer to some extent. And that is essentially what Gatekeeper is for. Well, they've made Gatekeeper a little bit stronger. Yes, control click to run the installer of an application is not gonna work when you go to Sequoia 15. However, you can still run it. You know, there's more steps now, but I think the idea is with Gatekeeper, let's make this user go through more steps so they're more careful in what programs they install. Personally, I don't think it's gonna make any difference. I think because users are gonna be in a hurry to install this whatever program it is, they think it will fix their problems that many of them, probably 70%, are simply gonna ignore having to go through all these checks instead of just control click like before. I really don't think it's gonna help very much. Okay, so a good article in Apple Insider talks about what's changed in runtime protection. And there is a lot of FUD on the internet and that really bothers me, you know, trying to get the clicks, uh, FUD being fear, uncertainty, and doubt. You gotta read a little bit deeper. It's not too, that awful difficult. If we scroll down here a little bit, this author really does a good job of explaining what's going on. He says, under earlier versions of Mac OS, user 
users could override Apple's gatekeeper security to launch apps in the Finder by control clicking on them. This override was only needed on the app's first run. In Sequoia, that's one away. So what do we have to do now? And this is the point where that fear, uncertainty, and doubt was laid out so people would, I guess they would panic and in some ways it's clickbait. I really don't know. But if you go to the horse's mouth, and this has been out there for some time, straight on apple.com, updates to runtime protection in macOS Sequoia. In macOS Sequoia, users will no longer be able to control click to override Gatekeeper if the software is unsigned. They need to visit System Settings, Privacy and Security to review security information for the software that they're trying to install. And I'm thinking you have to accept it. So pretty straightforward. I don't know if it tells you to go into Privacy and Security, but you should understand that. I hope you do. Let's see. System Settings. Privacy and security. So somewhere in here, you're going to find that there's an application that you have to click on in order to make it work. It's really not a big deal, in my opinion. I don't see any apps that I have that have that requirement, but I am not on Sequoia. Okay. If you distribute software outside of the Mac App Store, of course, that would be unsigned, we recommend that you submit your software to be notarized. The Apple Notary Service automatically scans your developer ID if you have a developer account, signed software, and performs security checks. When your software is ready for distribution, it's assigned a ticket to let a gatekeeper know. So it's, you know, everybody has to go through an extra step. The purpose is to make people think about whether or not they should be opening and installing that particular application. One simple way you could get around it is just use a different operating system. And of course, I don't recommend, excuse me, I don't recommend Windows. It, honestly, the next best thing is Linux to me. But you got to understand it's like two-factor authentication. To have to do these extra steps isn't to annoy you or lock out unsigned applications the idea is to get you to think before you install an application. So that whole control click thing previously, it was used to tell you, hey, you should think about this. You're about to install an application. All right. I wanted to answer another question that is off topic. So if you want to click out, we are done discussing unsigned applications, signed applications, and how to get around being able to install the unsigned application. I haven't heard it asked, but I'm going to address it anyway because I have a feeling somebody out there wants to know, are you going to do any more Linux videos? I haven't seen a Linux video from you for a long time. That is true. That is true. However, I just got these MacBooks about six months ago, so I'm having fun with them and doing different things. And I'm enjoying learning about the Mac, and I really enjoy figuring out how to get open source working with the Mac. Will I go back to Linux? Well, in actuality, I've already went back to Linux because my workflow is better on Linux than on a Mac. It just is. For one thing, my setup in my office, I have three monitors, and I have a desktop, well, it's a tower and it's not on the desk, but a full-size PC. And I can plug in any number of external hard drives that I want. 
I can use the Blu-ray drive. And you're probably saying to yourself, who uses a Blu-ray drive? I do. I watch movies with it. Do I sit there and watch the movie? No. But when I'm working on comics, and if you know, I sell comics on the side, it, it really helps me to be able to have something that I've already watched going on just to kind of, I don't know, make me forget that I'm working kind of thing. When I shoot videos, it's much different. I don't mind it, and I like the, even the editing process I enjoy. So, yes, I am using Linux currently. There are a couple of features I like in window, or Windows that I like in Mac OS that are essentially parts of the walled garden that I actually agree with. Um, so I have an iPhone. I really like being able to connect and the iPhone and my computer, and my tablet, I have an iPad, I have a mini, and see my messages on any device. I like being able to answer the phone on any device. So if I got a call right now, I could answer the call. Linux, it's got a little bit of work. It hasn't really come full circle where it's able to do those types of things. You can do more of that type of thing with Android. However, you have to work at it. And I know you're going to say, yeah, but it's Linux. What did you think would happen? You think it would automatically start working? No, no, I'm not saying that. But in some regards, I do like um, the easy route. And I don't take it every time, but... For general usage, where I'm sitting down and like I am now, I've got this computer, we're having a discussion, talking about applications, talking about limitations of Mac OS. I do prefer having a MacBook. I have two other Linux systems, excuse yeah, Linux systems. I have a, um, actually they're both Lenovo's. One is a ThinkPad and one is a lighter, smaller Yoga. So it just depends what I'm in the mood for, you know? I mean, I know there are people out there that say, you should be a purist, you should only use Linux. Well, I don't agree with that. You have to remember, what is the purpose of a computer? Are you proselytizing? Or are you using that computer? Because for you, it's the best tool to use. And personally, I think that's the factor that you have to consider. Is it fun to use Linux? Oh, yeah. I think it's kind of like in the 60s and 70s, maybe even before that, people getting uh, a ham radio license and setting up all the hardware and learning how to communicate and you know, doing all these different things with ham radio. I think, it, you know, it's very similar to that with Linux. It's something you do on your own and you make it work the way you want to. So yes, I will be making Linux videos. Okay, that's all I have for you. If you enjoyed this video, like it. And if you want to, subscribe. If you don't, you don't but I'm glad to have you here. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.